Hi everyone and welcome to Stand Up America. I'm your host Dave Frank. Thanks for joining us. If you're sick and tired of politics in our country and our community, then this could be the program for you. On this program we discuss what's going on in our community and we will talk about a plan to begin dealing with our issues in a way that is truly of the people, by the people, and finally for the people in our community. We live in a world where we are voting on American Idol, Dancing with the Stars, CNN, Fox, and other venues. It's now time we the people to start voting on real issues that affect our lives right in our community. So let's get started. On my program today, I've got a good friend and fellow activist, Jesse Davis. Jesse, welcome to the program. Nice to be here, Dave. Uh, Jesse, let me ask you a question. How did you get started uh, being the, the activist that you are in this community? Well, uh, I'm a lifelong resident here, but uh, a few years back I started really noticing things that just didn't seem to be right going on. And uh, once you start looking, it just gets bigger and bigger. Now you have a business in, in, in South Bend, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and so uh, what kind of business do you have? I own a drain cleaning and excavating company. Okay, and from what I understand, you were getting business from the city to work on these uh, drains, is that correct? Yes, we had gotten work from the city for several years. And did you derive a large percentage of your income from uh, the jobs that you were getting from the city? Yes, a good percentage. And how many, uh, how many other companies are there like yours in our community? A uh, lot of other drain companies, there was about eight or ten that were actually um, doing the same type of work I was doing for the city. Okay, so when you'd get a job, the city basically rotated uh, the different companies so that they all basically got a piece of the action. Is that, is that how it worked? Yeah, pretty much. It was uh, kind of a fair thing. Um, really, I think if it was your customer and there was a problem that needed fixed, generally they would try to keep your customer with their particular contractor rather than bring a new contractor in the door. You know, it seems as though a lot of businesses uh, feel as though there are a lot of political games being played in our community. What, what, what happened to you and your business that really caused you to, to stand up and, and be the activist that you are now? Well, um, about two years ago, we noticed that we weren't getting the calls from the city anymore and a customer actually notified me that there was a, another company doing the work and the city had told them they had to do the work and that we could not do it. So basically you were getting cut out? Pretty much myself and every other local contractor for that matter. So, so it, it, was it a, a political crony that ended up getting this business? That, is that what happened? At first we weren't sure what the reasons were. Uh, you know, we were told the city was trying to save money and things of that nature, but after doing some research, I found that the gentleman that was here from Kendallville, Indiana, as a matter of fact, uh, was in fact pretty much a lifelong friend of a city person and uh, that's probably how his foot got in the door. So that was the game that was being played against your company and, and what, what, do you, what did you say, like eight, other, eight or nine, ten other companies? Yeah, roughly eight to ten other contractors. And they were all hiring em, uh, employees like you were? Oh yeah, several of them have had to actually lay off employees because of this. So because of this action, basically uh, ten companies have been hurt oh, because yes. of these political games that have been played. Definitely. So that turned you into an activist. You figured out that uh, things were uh, going on in our community that didn't smell right? Correct. That was just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think that uh, you've done a great job. I know that you've got a website that you've uh, put a lot of videos on. And I'll, I'll let you give the name of your website so that people can start to go to it and, and see what Jesse has done over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, he's really done an excellent job at, at following where our tax monies are going. I mean, the question now has to be asked, are, are we not paying enough in, in taxes or are our monies being misappropriated? And if there is a story like Jesse's out there, I'm sure there are a lot of other stories like this out there, wouldn't you say, Oh, Jesse? I'm sure there are many. So the name of your website is? Actually, if you go to YouTube and you punch in I spy for you one you can find my videos on there so ladies and gentlemen jesse is the i spy guy go there and 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 really 
search it out. You, you determine for yourself whether you think that these games are being played with our tax money. You know, we're paying more taxes than ever before, Jesse. I mean, you, before this program started you, started, you were showing me some of the things that you found as far as new jobs and uh, raises that have been given in the city. Uh, you know, and this is at the same time that our schools are, are basically firing teachers, firing aides, the, the, some of the schools are doing without nurses. The, from what I understand, the school superintendent is making close to $180,000, $190,000 a year. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just wondering how we the people can keep paying these taxes and afford this nonsense. Well, and as I spoke to you earlier and was explaining, most people don't realize um, the scope of things. You know, even if you go sit in at a council meeting, you know, they bring a bill up and, and they say they're appropriating money for salaries and things of that nature. But unless you actually physically pull the paperwork up yourself and go through it line by line, you don't realize that here in 2012, when the city's struggling for money and they're increasing our taxes and creating new ones right. in the last few years, that they're creating dozens of new positions, such as uh, talent director for $50,000 a year. Now, I'm not sure exactly why South Bend needs a talent director, but um, you know, there's, there's a lot of new positions being created and it's costing millions of dollars in salaries and that does not include the benefits that they're gonna get as well. Yeah, I, you know, at a time that we're, that we're firing teachers, closing schools, and, and the kids are really paying for misappropriations of our hard-earned tax dollars, it sounds as though there are a lot of avenues that our monies are going down that, uh, that they shouldn't be. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you've been a voting age for quite some time. How does a person in our community how do they figure out who to vote for? I mean, it seems as though we, we, we replace one person for another person. And, you know, time after time, we still have these decisions that are being made by this handful of people that really don't seem to make much sense. How do you, how do you see it? Um, I mean, in this day and age, basically, it's a money game. And it seems like everything boils down to money. I was doing some research today, and it just amazed me that tens of millions of dollars are spent even on local elections. I mean, it's, it's staggering amounts of money. And for that kind of money to be flown out there when we have housing problems, we have homeless people, we have hungry people, we have school issues, you know, just to throw those millions and millions of dollars down the drain for a campaign just seems to be senseless to me. You know, Jesse, I'm, I'm two days shy of being 64. And I'm from South Bend, and I can tell you that this town, this area, is in the worst shape that I have ever, ever seen it. We are now paying more taxes than we've ever be paid before, and you know we're seeing we're, we're seeing gang violence, we're seeing schools that are underfunded. We have people that are dying from lack of health care because it's either un unattainable or unaffordable. And we're sitting here in our community. This is our little piece of America. And we're waiting for these politicians to fix these problems. I don't think they can fix these problems, Jesse. I think it should be up to we, the people, to fix these problems. Oh, I agree. And the politicians obviously can say whatever they want during their campaign time and once it's happened and they're elected we often get totally opposite results of what we thought we were voting for. They say one thing and when they get elected they do something entirely different. Correct. Once you've cast your vote and you voted them into office you've basically lost control and you've that was your your only time to vote. So that was you know voting for someone to represent us that's our voice. And, you know, we've been doing this for 235 years. It's not working. I mean, I'm, I, like I said, I'm a couple days shy of 64. I have never been asked my opinion yet on any issue, and most of the people that I talk to feel the same way. You know, we live in the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the technology that we have today is nothing short of miraculous. I mean, when you can take a picture of somebody, and shoot it off into outer space and it comes down 
in, you know, there are hundreds of millions of phones out there. It comes down in the right phone. I mean, this is nothing short of miraculous. And the question that we have to start asking ourselves is, are we going to keep doing what we've been doing? Because I think if we do, isn't that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. The results that we've been getting over the last 45 years that I've been able to observe, the results are bad. When you have nine people that sit on a city council out of 267,000 people in St. Joe County and do our thinking for us, that's a brain dead system. And when you, on a state level, when you have 150 people out of 6 million people doing the thinking for everyone, that's a brain dead system. And when you look at 535 people that are accepting bribes in the, in the form of campaign finances uh, in Washington, D.C., doing the thinking for 300 million people, that's nothing short of a brain dead system. What we have to do is we have to use as many brain cells as possible, ladies and gentlemen. And, and the answer isn't in Washington and it's not in Indianapolis, it's right in our own community. Because what we can do is we can start building a system that works for everybody. Not just the nine people that sit on the city council and one mayor. I mean, these guys may be really smart, but I can tell you, you can take nine of the smartest people in South Bend and they aren't as smart as 267,000 people. This is the plan. You've heard Jesse talk about his situation. He's got a business. He was getting some, some kind of business from the uh, city. And uh, after a period of time, those 10 business owners like Jesse, they were knocked out. And now it's just being given to one or two contractors and, and, and they're basically sharing the tax money as opposed to probably the hundreds of employees that were benefiting from it before. And this is a time that we're trying to figure out how to create jobs in our community. Look, let me explain it to you this way. The politicians have already figured this out. The answer to fixing America is, by, is remapping America. You know, they've been remapping America for, America for years with gerrymandering. What they do is they remap their districts so that they can get elected or reelected. The phone company has already also figured it out. They started remapping America with area codes so that we could communicate better. And the, and the Postal Service has figured it out with area codes, or zip codes. And they've, they've figured it out that if you remap and you get reorganized, you can deliver the mail more efficiently. We the people have to figure it out too. What we have to do is we have to remap America as well. And, if you, and we now have the technology where America can now look like a honeycomb. And the reason that it should look like a honeycomb is if you look at God's creature that's most responsible for making the world a beautiful place, it's a honeybee. And we can now remap America so that it looks like a honeycomb. Our community will now look like a hexagon. Have you ever looked at a honeycomb and looked at the holes where the, the, the bees store the fruits of their labor? They store those, those, those energies in a hexagon. And our community will now look like a hexagon. The goal of, 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 of this communication system will be to allow you, the people, to come up with ideas to make our education system better, our environment better, a better tax system, a better health care system. But what we're going to do in our community is that we're going to start worrying about our community. What we want to do is we want to build a local issues television and radio channel in our community. In fact, WNIT would be a great channel to start with. Public broadcasting that's actually broadcasting the public. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a broadcasting station for, for television and radio to send your ideas out. Maybe you have an idea to make our education system better. Maybe you have a better, a better idea for our tax system, whatever it is. You can present your ideas directly to the community over our local issues, television, and radio channel. And then what we'll, we'll do is we'll debate your idea. And we will videotape that debate and present that information to the community so that they're educated on the issue that you think can make our, our community better. And then you're going to be able to vote with any touchtone phone. This will be your new key to the city. And if you don't have one, you can borrow your friends. This is a new voting device. We don't have to go down once a year and vote for the lesser of two evils, walk into voting booths and stand in line and drive across town. This is your no voting device. And, and when you find an issue on our local issues, television and radio channel that you have an interest in, 
you can use this and you can vote with it. You'll call a local number, your call will go into a, a community computer that will have your citizen participation identification number. The computer will verify you as a voter, ask what issue number you'd like to vote on, press one for yes, two for no, count your vote, block you out from voting more than once, and we can now have decisions made of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's really that simple. Jesse, I mean, we're voting on American Idol now. We vote on Dancing with the Stars. We vote on CNN. We vote on Fox. Why in the world are we not voting on issues when I can use this touchtone phone, I can call Comcast, for example, I can pay my bill with this phone, they can take it out of my account and take my money out of my account, put it in their account accurately, and we're doing all these things, they figured out all this technology to be able to take our money. Why don't they want to hear our voices, Jesse? Well, obviously, if they hear our voices, then that means there's going to have to be true transparency. And we hear transparency from the president on down to our local politicians, but you know as well as I do, that transparent window, they pull the blind down as soon as they get in office. <laughs> that's right. So. Well, you're absolutely right, and, and that's what we do need. We do need transparency because it's our money. You know, we've got nine people on the city council. They spend about $280 million a year of our money and they spend that, they, first of all, they take that money without asking. They spend that money without asking. Isn't that stealing? I mean, I'm not trying to be hard on, on our system, but I'm telling you, our founding fathers had a revolution over a four cent a pound tax on tea, and I cannot think of one thing in our lives that is not taxed. Well, taxation without representation, uh has a very strong meaning to many, with the exceptions of most politicians. Well, that's right, that's right. And, and you know, it, it's really important that we start to realize that these guys are supposed to represent us. And I'm an insurance agent. I don't care if I'm a doctor, a lawyer, what I am, if, or a realtor, for example. But if, if we don't communicate with our clients, we can't represent them. And I can tell you, once again, I'm 64 in a couple of days. I've never been asked my opinion on any issue. So I'm here to say that I'm not being represented. And the times that I have tried to impose my feelings on any issue, I've lost. And I'll tell you, I would rather start representing myself directly. I don't think anybody knows the kind of world that I want to live in for myself and my children and their children and all the children in, in, the, in America and the world. I don't, think, I don't think the politicians know what kind of world we want better than we do. Oh, I agree 100%. Um, it's pretty amazing that, you know, like I say, once you vote them into office, they kind of close that door. And uh, when you do approach with issues, a lot of times, if you do get an answer, it's tiptoeing around the actual problem, or you just get no response whatsoever. Absolutely, and, and, and all of these guys promise that once they're in office, they're gonna listen to us. And you know, I've been pushing this plan for 22 years. I have, I used to do a, another, uh, I did a radio program 22 years ago called Stand Up America. And I used to tell the people on the radio, I said, the politicians don't have the answers for you, you have the answers for yourselves. Nobody can represent you better than you. So why don't we use the technology and let you start representing yourself? Because I, I think you'll agree that after those politicians get voted into office, the door knocking stops. In fact, it, I don't think it ever started, to tell you the truth. Uh, I've gotten some junk mail this year, uh, obviously, uh, from people that I had no intentions of voting for, nor did I ask for it. Um, and there again, that kind of explains the multi-millions of dollars that get spent on the campaigning. I mean, obviously, whether you voted Democrat, Republican, Independent, whatever, uh, you don't want to go out every day and find all this stuff in your mailbox that you have no use for. Right, right. Well, it, it, it just seems as though people are waking up to the fact that the system really is not working. I mean, we've got more people losing their homes today they're losing their businesses today. People are literally dying from, from lack of health care in our community. We're all sitting here waiting for Washington to have the answer to this problem. 
Washington can't fix Washington. We're waiting for Indianapolis to, to fix this problem. Have you really thought about what Indianapolis and state capitals are doing for us, our communities? You know, they're making money now. The, 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 the state capital is making money off the sale of alcohol that's killing us. Mm -hmm. It's making money off the sale of tobacco that's killing us. Now it's making money off of gambling that's causing depression, bankruptcy, divorce, suicide, all kinds of problems. So they're making money off of gambling. They're involved in extortion because if you don't have the money to pay your property taxes, whether it be a business, rental, or a commercial property, if you don't have that money, they kick you out of your home or your business. And, and you know, Jesse, when you put those things in line, making money off of alcohol, making money off of tobacco, making money off of gambling, making money off of extortion by kicking us out of our communities, out of our, our homes. Isn't that what the mafia used to do? Well, it's basically legalized, uh, legalized rape. It's I organized guess, crime, eyes. isn't it? Yes. Okay. And the question is, is why, if we know that this is going on, and we know that the economy is bad in our community because there's no cash, ladies and gentlemen, there's no cash. If you look at the black and white mix, uh, pictures of the depression, they had all the manpower, they had all the resources. The thing that they were lacking was cash and that's what's lacking in our community. That's why we are facing a recession or a depression. However, depending on if you've lost your job or your neighbor lost his job. You know, it's a depression if you lose your job. But anyway, the reason that our community is not working is the same reason that an engine doesn't work if there's no oil in it. The same reason your body doesn't work if there's no blood in it. We need cash in our community so that we can barter with each other. And when you think about it, you know where the cash went? It went through the system. You know, Jesse, let's, let's talk economics just for a second here. Let's pretend that you and I represent all the people in St. Joe County, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's pretend we have $100 that represents all the money in St. Joe County. Every time you and I trade, if, we have if I have $100 and I trade with you, now you've got $93 in the state of Indiana, Indianapolis has $7. Correct. Now you trade back with me and now we're down to $87. They've got $13. I trade with you so on and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason that we don't have any cash in our community is because it's being sucked out of our community and without that cash, we can't barter with each other. If you have no cash, you can't pay your electric, your, your gas, whatever. You can't take your family out to eat. We need cash in our community, excuse me, and as long as we have this tax system in place that keeps sucking the cash out of our community, Jesse, how many vehicles do you have? Five. You have five vehicles. You have to buy licenses for them every year, right? Yes. Where does that money go? It goes to Indianapolis. And the wheel tax, obviously. And, and the wheel tax. <laughs> the, right? the whole problem with that, Dave, is if you send your 7%, let's say, for sales tax. So for every $100, you send $7 downstate. And they collect that in tax. That actually was collected from our community. That's right. But by the time it gets filtered and, and divvied up from Indianapolis, we're only going to see a return, if we're lucky, of 2 or $3 of that $7. And that's where the biggest issue is, is how that money gets pulled down there and it doesn't come straight back to our community and it doesn't come back as a whole. We only get a very small percentage of that back. And that leads to why our schools are having problems. It's not an educational institution. It's not ran that way anymore. They run our school systems now as a business, like you or I would run. That's right. And it's all about the numbers and all about the money. And I mean, that's sad because it's affecting our community. It's affecting the education of our children who are going to run this community. And, and you know, Jesse, it, it, when you think about it, why are we sending our tax money to Indianapolis so that they can pay for our education system here in our community. Why would we ever do that? Isn't that a totally energy inefficient system? 
Isn't the shortest distance between two points a straight line? And why would you want your education monies to go to Indianapolis and then be picked over and be sent back here? You know, over a matter of time, they're going to have all the money. And you, when you look at Indianapolis today, it looks like the Emerald City. It looks, I mean, the streets are great. They've got the finest hospitals. They've got the finest education. They've got, they've got our money. They are building things that, I mean, it, it's just unimaginable. But the point is, is that they're doing this to every community around the country. That's why we need a system in our community that gives each and every person in our community a voice so that when someone like Dave Frank says to the community, wait a minute, I've got an idea. Why don't we, why don't we have a law that says we keep our sales tax right here in our community and pay for the things that we think are important in our community? These are the things that we as a, as a community can do. But first, we have to put the tools in place to give each and every one of us a voice on issues that affect our lives. And if you have a voice and you're able to vote on all these issues, it's going to eliminate a, a lot of the loopholes. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. When they create something, they, they always create a loophole with it so there's a back door to come in and do something else. You look at our school system, getting back on that topic, the Indiana State Constitution says that every child in the state of Indiana is entitled to a tuition-free public education. But yet you and I send our children to a public school. We not only pay hundreds of dollars a year in book fees, but then they send you a long list home of items you must supply right. in order for your child to get that education. And I mean, I find that wrong. And the problem is, is they say tuition-free, but book fees, they don't consider a tuition. They consider book fees outside that uh, description. So they want to give it to you, but they don't really want to give it to you. They just want to pretend like they're really giving you something. Correct. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, we've got a wonderful community right here in St. Joe County, and it can be fixed. But the politicians aren't going to do it in Washington, Indianapolis, or they're not going to do it downtown. You know, these are bright kids that are running our town now, but you know what? They don't, when it comes to really knowing the answers to the education system, really having the answers to the fixing the health care system in our community, really having the answers to what kind of environment do we want in our community. You, the people, have those answers, ladies and gentlemen. you got to start believing in yourselves, and you got to stop believing in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny because you can replace Ds for Rs and Rs for Ds and maybe throw an L in there when you go vote once a year for the lesser of the evils. But the bottom line is nobody can represent you better than you can represent yourself. We have the technology today where you can have a voice every day on the issues that, 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 that you want to have a voice in. And if you don't want to vote on issues, you don't have to. But there are a lot of brilliant people out there, people that have some common sense, that have common sense ideas to get our community working. And if we don't do this now, we can't leave this for our kids. Think of it as an antibiotic. Think of this as a syringe. We've got an antibiotic, it's called technology. We want to build a system that's truly of the people, by the people, and for the people. All we've got to do is put the necessary components together. We can make this happen. We can build a state-of-the-art community right here. And when we inject this in our community, they're going to do this in every community around the country and hopefully around the world so that we can stop fighting over issues and start using our heads over issues. So anyway, uh, our time's up. Uh, Jesse, I want to thank you for being on the program today. I want to I, I want to commend you on your activism. Thanks so much for standing up. The goal is to get everybody to stand up, ladies and gentlemen. If Jesse can do it, if I can do it, if people like George Lane and Mario Sims, other people, Sam Brown can do it, we can all do it. Thanks so much for listening and, and looking forward to seeing and talking to you next time. Take care.